Fruit is good. Puppies? Ice cream? The utter destruction of your enemies to verify your slowly deteriorating ego? Well, whatever you consider good, someone else is going to think it's bad. Ice cream, your intestines think that's an award crime. Your ego is already smaller than my LP gains, so sit down, you troglodyte. And we're talking about champions in League of Legends. If you say, X champion is bad, then that is really just your opinion. Mostly. There are plenty of sites out there that collect essential data. And that's actual data, which can have an effect on who you play or even how you play a particular champion. Now, Aurelian Soul from the data is considered a good champion. Even after his recent nerf, you could say he's a standard mid laner, even though he's a bit busted in a quote unquote elite play. But for real, his win rate has gone down quite a bit in low elo, though I'm pretty sure that's because just seeing that a champion has been nerfed can indirectly lower their win rate anyway. What I'd like to do in this video is take a good look at Aurelian Soul, give him a fair shake, and see what he really can and can't do. Talk about his abilities, his lane phase, and his team fighting to really get a sense of where he lies on the spectrum of champion power. And if you're doubting my authority, then shut up, because I've been non-stop playing him on the stream, which you should come watch 5pm EST Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Otherwise, I'll come over to your house and shoot cosmic energy at your mom. Aurelian Soul has some of the most visually appealing abilities in the game. From massive solar systems, to breathing space dust, to... Stars. He has a wide variety of tools in his kit that let him zoom around, blow up, blast, and boop to victory. He can roam very effectively and provide constant damage in team fights. But there are a few things, especially with his Q and ult, that really don't make much sense. Plus, there's a larger discussion of his actual ability to lane in this meta, where any champion that builds a sharp object is objectively better in most cases. So I know that Isol's Q, there's a lot to discuss. Firstly, if I throw an actual solo system at you, and it does the same damage as the Yumi Q, Holy Jesus. What is that? I'd actually just prefer aesthetic sunduration, like an Anivi Q, and it does more damage the larger it grows. Oh, but wait, you would say. Does it just become a better at that point? Well, my friend, Riot doesn't really consider that a new champion might just be a better version of an existing one, so I think that'd be absolutely fine. Think about things that should be better, let's talk about Aesol's ult. I've said it a million times, my favorite ability in the game. Eat your heart out, Lux, you flashlight bit. This is what the Fusro Dawn should have been in Skyrim, and it also feels very impactful when you use it. So, why? The Frick Falcon Flapjack doesn't feel so fucking weak. Voice of light, more like you just shouted in my ear for no reason. Here's the bill for my hearing aid, you prick. If we're going to compare, let's compare laser abilities in the game. There are only a few, but they all mechanically function very similarly. Victor has a laser, its base damage ratios are not as hot as Aesol's, and becomes this laser of death, does a million damage. Fuck all, does fucking true damage, and spin around in a circle. Lux has a 100% AP ratio and a higher base damage and massive range, literally hitting me from across the map. This is unacceptable. Why would you just gotta switch your new champion and the one you've been playing is really just because some pro players having some fun role playing as a dragon in game. You're telling me I can't one shot people from my bases and accept the one every fight. Aurelian Soul's iconic ability in his arsenal is his W. This is what defined him as DPS mage slash battle mage when he was released, and people really had no idea how to play him because of this. His Q was really weird, sure, because it had a longer delay, but really his W was the, the weirdest part. His W moved a lot slower, but it was a toggle ability, and you said it and just kind of forgot it, you know, just kind of spun around. It was actually a really fun ability to use, and you had a lot of damage in team fights and constant procs of Riley's and Landry's was super rewarding. It felt really good to be the largest champion in League of Legends. Lore. But there was a problem. and 9.17 saw the end of another DPS mage. Okay, I'm gonna have a controversial opinion about Aurelian Soul. Look, just wait, hold on. Just don't, don't click away from the video yet. 
I quite like his current W. You what? I know, what? I know, I, I hear what? you all yelling at me. What? I've seen all your comments already how they should revert the W. And to be fair, I miss old Asol. He was unique for his time. That's something I wish they would return to. But I feel like the new W gives you a lot more choices while in combat and has much more active playstyle than the old one. They also just turned Asol into late game carry, to be honest, which seems to be a trend for DPS mages, which means just try not to die to the plethora of assassins that are popular this season. Farm 30 minutes and you'll come up victorious. Oh, oh wait, <clears throat> sorry, what I meant to say was you'll have a clear indicator of success and a satisfying in-game payoff. On the one hand, gold. On the other hand, painful, agonizing failure. Oh god, alright, so this is going to be the worst part. A soul's lane phase is dubious. There are times when you feel like the actual godlike god being, cosmic, cosmic entity, entity that you were always meant to be, and there's real terror. Does this mean the ASL is bad? We may never know. But what I do know is that there are too many terrible matchups to count, really. Now, I don't mean that playing against these champions means you'll lose your lane straight up, but a lot of the time going toe-to-toe -to -toe with people who have an unhealthy obsession with knives isn't conducive to a successful gaming experience. Champions who have gap closers are also going to be super difficult, and that's unfortunate because there are like 50 million of them in the game. 200 plus years of game development experience and look at another guy with a gun, a shield, a stealth, a dash, and an execute. Oh, and uh, by the way, he brings back people from the dead. Cool. There's so many champions, it just dumps you so hard, it sometimes feels impossible to get anywhere during lane phase. You'll be sitting there, mind your own business, being happy little dragon, and then Ezio from Wish decides to swoop in and say a one-liner and throws a boomerang at you. Like, what the fuck? I can't do anything. This champion is useless. What is it? Five players have Oh my god, I can't stand this. Well, things have changed over the years for Asol, one of them being his early game dominance in lane. Like I said before, you had a lot of damage along with your old W, but Bride decided to shift more power into late game, give more room for counterplay. So this means if you've been living under a rock, you probably don't know how bad Asol's laning is. W has a sizable CD early on, and with the recent CD nerfs to your Q, it means we have to make better choices in lane, especially when you fight against their numerous bad matchups. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. Even a voice of light. But I'm still trying to build for my freaking hearing aid. Galio, a beacon of justice. Shen, the defender of the spirit world. Twisted fate, a guy with cards. What do these champions have in common? They have abilities, specifically abilities that are ultimates, that allow them to impact the map from far away. Aurelian Soul is also one of these champions. His E gives him the ability to impact the map, and it's not a basic ability, except that it basically has the CD of an ultimate, so it doesn't really matter. Now, a few complaints I have about the E ability. One, it's not as fast as other global abilities. Definitely won't win you many races anytime soon. Galio ult is pretty quick, so are Shens and TFs. It mainly has to do with the fact that it basically just increases your movement speed and lets you fly over terrain. I guess because it is a basic ability, it needs a limiting factor like this, but I could argue that it's an ability that'll need a bit of love in the future if it's gonna keep going the way it is. You know, with all these new champions. Two. Why does damage pull us out of the sky? This is probably the most confusing part of the ability. I'm I'm a celestial being from outer space, a cosmic entity that created the universe, uh, helped, well, that helped create the universe. Not didn't create the universe, but you know, that's no one who's, who's taking notes. And you're telling me when a teddy bear with a blow dart shoots me, it makes me trip and scrape my knee? It really sucks. There are champions with way more mobility that can just ignore the basic rules of crowd control, but real talk. Our is very useful, has a lot of impact on the game when used properly. It just sucks that so many new champions break the rules, but the older ones that I love are being replaced basically, which could be a whole nother video conversation. Aurelian Soul is one of the few champions that holds a dear place in my heart. Him, along with several other champions, have broken the mold that we've seen a lot in the past, and even some in the present. His unique way of dealing damage is hard at first to get the hang of, but once you take some time to practice and learn how his mechanics work, it's a rewarding experience every game. Yeah, there are times when he can feel impossible to play, and there's still a lot I'd say that could change, but nonetheless, I'm happy flying around, shouting at people, and slamming constellations into entire teams. Is it really in Soul bad? I'd say it depends. Are you willing to put in the work? You may not be the highly mechanical champion that Azir is, but there's a lot of nuance to his kit that requires knowledge of not just who you're fighting, but your awareness of what others are doing on the map. If you are, then I think you'll find a lot of success and have a lot of fun doing it. There really is no one like him, and that makes him an attractive champion to pick up, practice, and master no matter how hard it can get sometimes. I think that's where the game shines for me. 
why I gravitate towards champions that are down the beaten path. Like, like really beaten. It's bad. He, he, he needs a doctor. I want a unique experience. And that's what a Brilliant Soul gives me. And I'm proud to say that I made him. Hey, so uh, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. I really enjoyed making this video and I think I might make more videos like this. The more analytical videos and stuff with all the memes and the things and the stuff and all the jokes. I mean, I don't know. I just, this was a lot of fun to make and I really enjoyed it. So hopefully you did too and you can show that with a like and subscribe, you know, hit that bell, whatever the fuck. Um, yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, oh, also don't forget, I have a Twitch stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, 5 p.m. EST. Uh, and yeah, maybe if, um, anyway, those are there. Go check them out. I really appreciate it all. Uh, and yeah, tell me what you think about Aurelian Soul. Leave it in the comments. Um, I, there was a lot of good comments on the previous Sister Aurelian Soul videos, so I hope that continues. And uh, I will keep answering them. Uh, we're almost to a thousand subscribers, so I do have something planned for a thousand subscribers. We're about almost a hundred away, so yeah. Um, Thank you so much for all the support and everything. Um, I really appreciate y'all. And uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm going now. Uh, bye. Uh, do, what do I, um, okay. Uh, just, just gotta, gotta just, you know, put that over there. All right, bye, 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 bye. Been going all night, don't stop till we see sunlight. We've been drinking all the cheap